missing nuclear bombs from the United States. The military takes extreme caution and follows a meticulous protocol when a nuclear bomb or weapon is being transported. But as the country with the second most number of nuclear bombs in the world, accidents are bound to happen. Let's assume a nuclear bomb fell from an airplane. What would happen? Do you think it would explode on impact, killing thousands of people? Before you see the answer, feel free to comment your initial thoughts below. The results may shock you. Nuclear bomb mistakes don't happen too often, but enough that we have a name for it. Broken arrows entail some sort of unexpected event that results in a nuclear weapon being accidentally launched, detonated, or lost. The U.S. emits to 25 broken arrows worldwide, five of which were lost and never recovered. How do nuclear weapons work? In simple terms, a chemical high-explosive compressed nuclear material until a critical mass is reached and fission happens. During fission, the nuclei of some heavy atoms split into smaller, lighter nuclei and release a lot of excess energy in the process. Thermonuclear weapons like hydrogen bombs go through the process of fusion. When exposed to extremely high temperatures and pressure, nuclei can fuse together to form heavier nuclei, releasing excess energy in the process. Those high temperatures and pressures happen through fission, so the trigger for a thermonuclear weapon is a nuclear weapon. It's a pretty tricky and dangerous process, so when transporting a nuclear bomb, there are amped procedures in place. Everything has to be planned out from the routine, minimizing the amount of stops needed to the exact weight that will be on board. But even the most airtight procedures can go wrong. The first nuclear weapons were made around 1930. It took the U.S. roughly 20 years to make their first big nuclear mistake. On February 14, 1950, a U.S. Corvier B-36 was on the way from Alaska to Fort Worth, Texas. It crashed in northern British Columbia after casting out a nuclear bomb into the Pacific Ocean. The bomb encased a considerable amount of natural uranium, along with 5,000 pounds of high explosives. Luckily, the bomb didn't contain the plutonium core for detonation, so it never went off and was also never found. The next loss happened sooner than you would expect. April 11, 1950, a bomber crashed into a mountain near Albuquerque, New Mexico. The bomber was carrying four spare detonators as well as a crew of 13 people. Some of the most highly explosive material burned in a fire amidst the crash, but the four spare detonators were recovered undamaged. Unfortunately, no one in the crew survived. This wasn't the last time this would happen. In fact, there were three more broken arrows in that year alone. In July of 1950, a B-50 nosedive from 7,000 feet up on a clear day straight into the ground, all high explosives on board detonating on impact. Four officers and 12 men were killed. In May of 1957, a plane was transporting a nuclear bomb to the Kirtland Air Force Base. At an altitude of 1,700 feet, the weapon suddenly dropped through the bomb bay doors, taking the doors down with it. The parachute was dropped, but because of the low altitude, they were as effective as loose sheets. The bomb dropped roughly four and a half miles south of the Kirtland control tower. The explosive material completely detonated, creating a crater of approximately 25 feet in diameter and 12 feet deep. For perspective, that's about half as wide as the height of the Hollywood sign, and about two times deeper than a refrigerator. The nuclear capsule was found intact, and luckily the only casualty was a poor cow who was grazing. What are some reasons broken arrows can happen? Well. On July 28, 1957, an aircraft carrying three entire nuclear bombs experienced a loss of power. The weapons dunked directly into the Pacific Ocean and were never found. February 5, 1958, two planes had a collision, one of the aircrafts housing a weapon on board. To protect the pilot, the 7,600-pound Mark 15 nuclear bomb was dropped from 7,200 feet at high speeds, and by what would some would call a miracle, no detonation occurred, and the pilot ejected in time to escape. The blast effects of a detonation would have had a flame radius of 1.2 miles and thermal radiation causing third-degree burns for 12 miles. Talk about a close call. Another reason broken arrows can happen are simple human errors. Hardly over one month after the previous incident, a captain mistakenly pulled an emergency release pin, dropping a Mark VI bomb 1,500 feet down and onto the playhouse where children were playing 200 yards away. 
The high explosives created a crater 70 feet wide and 35 feet deep. Chunks of debris from the explosion flattened the parents of the children's home and several other buildings, including a nearby church. In escaping from the house, the mother cut her head on a piece of plaster. Considering it, it could have been a lot worse in the family as well. Everyone was very lucky. If the mom had been dropped into the yard rather than onto the playhouse, it would have killed everything in a 10-mile radius. The family sued the Air Force and was awarded $54,000, or $488.7,000 in today's money. The crew members of the aircraft were also immediately accused of sabotage and were arrested, but released when they explained what happened. Imagine waking up for a normal day of work and then making one tiny mistake leading to the near death of 10 miles worth of innocent people. So, where are the missing bombs? Well, the missing bomb that was lost on February 5th in 1958 was found by a scuba diver after 50 years of its location remaining unknown. An unmanned submarine was sent to survey the conditions of the 3.8 megaton bomb. Fortunately, the conditions of the weapon were in good enough shape for it to be diffused and moved to a Mayport Naval Station in Florida. So, what should you do if you find a nuclear weapon dropped near you? Though it's unlikely that this will happen to you, as you can see, it wouldn't be the first time. The first thing to do is to take shelter. If there isn't a bomb shelter available, find a building made of the most dense material possible. The thicker the material, the better the protection. A one-story house with a wooden frame is better than a 20-story apartment building, for example. If you're in a tall building with many stories, the top or bottom floors will be your safest options in protecting you from the radioactive material that will contaminate the air. Expect to stay inside for at least 24 hours unless instructed otherwise by authorities. Once you've taken shelter, wash any debris off your clothes to avoid any burning of the skin. Wash with soap, but don't use any conditioner because it can bind radioactive material to your hair. Gently wipe your eyelids, eyelashes, and blow your nose. Radiation can't be identified with the regular human senses, so even if the air seems like it might be safe, Continue to listen to authorities regarding radiation levels and proceed with caution. Hopefully, this information will always be in the good-to-know category, and you won't ever have to experience a nuclear bomb dropping in your backyard. So, did you enjoy this video? Do you think more missing broken arrows will be found in the future? We would love for you to share your thoughts in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe so you'll never miss another video, and click the notification bell so you're the first one here when we post. See you in our next video.